Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Today we'll talk about two different kinds of databases, row-oriented row and column-oriented. So examples of row-oriented databases are Postgres and MySQL. Column-oriented would be Redshift, BigQuery, and Snowflake. Both of the databases have very different sets of pros and cons, so we want to look at both and see which one is better for which use case. It's important to have some sample data while we're looking at the pros and cons. So we're going to use this very simple relational table. It has three columns, name, age, and gender. Think of it as just a relational database table. So you have three rows and three columns. Before looking into the arrangement in disk for both row and column databases, it's important to know how data is laid out in a database. In a database, at the end of the day, your data is stored in physical disks. Data in one table can span multiple physical disks. In a row-oriented database, data belonging to one row is kept close together. So for every record, each column is right next to each other. So as you can see, you in, let's say you have three disks and each of your row is going to be in one disk. So in the first disk, you have all the information related to the Bob row. In the next disk, you have all information related to the row of Sarah. And in the third disk, you have all the data related to Alex. So if you want all the fields of one particular row, you just need to go to one disk to get your data. It's important to know that most of the time that you spent on a database query, is going from one disk to another, which is called the seek time. So you want to keep the number of disks minimal for every query. So when you are making one query, you don't want to scan multiple disks, ideally. In this case, if you want data related to one row only, you can literally just go to the first disk and get all the data related to Bob. You don't even need to look at the other disk. So getting row-specific data is very, very quick this way. In a column-oriented data, data related to one column is stored together in disk. So this is very different from what happens in the row-oriented database. In the column-oriented database, every column stays together. So as you can see, in the first disk, we have all the data related to your name column. So you have Bob, Sarah, and Alex in one disk. All the data related to age is in the other disk and all the data related to gender is in the third disk. So if you were to get all the information for one row, now you have to literally scan all three of the disk to get Bob's name, age, and gender. However, the advantage you have with this design is if you were to get all the data related to one column, you just go and look at that one disk. So if you want to get all the names, you just look at the first disk. If you want to find out the sum of all ages, the average age, or the maximum age, you can just look at the second disk. Uh, whereas in the row database, if you wanted only a particular column, you would still need to look at all three of the disk. And here in the column one, if you want to look at a column, you just look at that one disk. So the takeaway from this is in a column-oriented database, data belonging to the same column is very close together in disk. Whereas in a row-oriented database, data related to a row is very close to each other. So let's look at a few advantages of row-oriented databases. The first one would be it's very good for OLTP operations. OLTP is very quick read and write for uh, one row at a time. Uh, as you saw, for a given row, all the data is uh, very close together. So if you wanted to read all the fields for one given row, you want to use a row-oriented database. Or if you have a workflow where you're doing very quick writes, and every time you write, you write one row at a time, this is a very good choice because when you write that one row, all the data needs to be in one part of the disk. So it's a very, very quick, uh, very, very quick write. And lastly, uh, if your use case involves reading one whole row at a time every time, you want to use a row-oriented database. That's because all the, the 
all the columns for that one row are very close to each other in disk. And the operation is going to be very, very quick. How about the disadvantages that comes with row-oriented databases? Performing aggregation over fields is very slow. By aggregation, I mean it can be a count operation, an average. Uh, it can be a count, it can be an average, it can be median, mean, any of those operations you're doing on a particular column. Uh, that's because if you looked at the way the row-oriented databases data is laid out, uh, let's just go back for our reference. Okay, so this is the row-oriented database. So if you were to find the average age, you would have to look at all three disks and then find the average. Given you have to go and seek multiple disks, this process is very slow. On the other hand, if you were doing the same thing in a column-oriented database, as you can see, all the ages are in the second disk. So to find the average, you just need to look at that one disk. All right, coming back to this, uh, row-oriented row databases are more memory intensive because every time, even if you need to read a subset of data for a given row, you bring the whole row into memory. So let's say you have a table that has 100 columns. You're doing a select query and you wanna only read like three columns from it. Even though your query says you want to read three columns, you bring the whole row to, uh, from disk to memory before reading it. So it's much, much more memory intensive. And lastly, uh, usually row-oriented databases uses more memory than column-oriented databases. That's because just the way some optimizations you can do in a column-oriented database, you cannot do that in a row-oriented database. I won't go into too much details in this video, but uh, the takeaway should be that normally a rule of thumb is if you have the same amount of data in a row database and a column database, the row-oriented database should take more space uh, than a column-oriented database. Now, for the advantages that you get from a column-oriented database, so obviously reading columns is very, very efficient. Uh, that's because all your data for one column is very close together in disk, so you don't have to seek multiple disks for that one read operation. Performing aggregation is very, very quick. As we saw in the example, if you wanted to find the average age, you just look at that one disk because all your age data is very close together. Whereas in a row database, if you wanted to do the same operation, you would have to look at all the disk. Uh, because the data related to every row is close to each other. And lastly, uh, there is uh, upside in less storage. Uh, that's the same thing we talked about in the previous slide. In a column-oriented database, there are multiple optimizations you can do. That is because all data from one column is together in disk, and there is only a finite subset of values you can have in a column. So the database can use multiple optimization technique to reduce the storage it needs to store each column. And if your database is taking less, less space, then by default, it's gonna be uh, less money that you have to spend. Uh, lastly, let's look at some of the disadvantages that comes with the column-oriented database. Uh, for, firstly, writing a row is very slow compared to a row-oriented database. That's because now if you're writing a new row, let's say in our existing table, we want to write a new person's data. The new person's data includes their name, their age, their gender. Doing a write in a column or into database would mean we have to move from disk to disk to write this one row. Whereas in a row or into database, this operation would be very quick because data for one row stays very close together. Similarly, very slow OLTP operations, which is the reverse of the row-oriented database. That's because the data for a given row is distributed in multiple disks. So if you want to read all the fields from one row, uh, that's very slow because you have to go and look for each column in each different disk. Lastly, if you want to read all the fields for a given row, that's one of the slowest operations you can do in a column-oriented database. Let's say you have 100 columns for each row and you want to read all 100 columns for a given row. 
in a column-oriented database, that process is going to be insanely slow. That's because all these uh, 100 columns are in different places in disk. So you have to seek multiple disks to read this one row of data. Whereas if this was a row-oriented database, all 100 columns for a given row would be very, very close to each other. So you wouldn't have to look at multiple, uh, multiple disks. Yep, that's all from me for today. Hope you learned something from this video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I will catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.